really? Because the last time I looked, my parents were straight. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a little confused here. But see the madness? See the Satan? There's no God in any of it. No God in any of it. God is the God of peace and reconciliation. And sometimes there has to be war to be peace. I get the dichotomy. Sometimes you have to confront people. Sometimes you have to stop seeing people or being going to their establishment. I get it. But publicly? Publicly go against them? Publicly say, I'm not going to eat there because they wrote a check? Because they wrote a check? What about all the people that work there that are going to suffer, you know, for, for, you know, for, for what's happening. I mean, does the, do the owners of Chick-fil-A get that if they lose a lot of business, they're going to have to downsize a little bit? Well, you know, we're going to have to do what we have to do. Well, that's right. Well, some of the people that work for you have, have families. You good Christians. And heathens and queers and drug addicts and whores and people of the color you don't like, they need to eat too. And my Bible says if you feed them food, they might listen to your testimony. There's no easier way in this life to get someone to listen to you for 20 minutes than giving them something to eat. Having a meal with them is the easiest way. There's nothing easier. I, I like coffee. I like the coffee date thing. I do. It's not as easy. Not as easy. It's food. Their mouths are full. You, you get them when their mouths are full and you start talking. And, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden their brains and their mouths are working together. Go, I love the way this person tastes. This person's story tastes like the best chicken I ever had. But no, let's just get, let's, why don't we put a sign on our door? No Jews allowed. I'm sorry, no queers allowed. Gosh. What religion do you think the Nazis thought they were? Well, we're Christians. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My gosh. Did we learn nothing? Did Churchill say something about, like, uh, history being doomed to repeat itself? You know, I mean, hello, I'll probably, I probably misquote that. Yeah, you know what? Retract this. So, <laughs> only one retraction for a lifetime. And I would never, ever, ever vacation in a state that allowed one city to slaughter helpless animals because of their breed. I would never. I would never. I'm just, I have to tell you that. But my country knew that was happening in Germany with God's people and did nothing. That's really radical. This Christian country of ours. Look how bad the queers have made it. Well, well where were the queers? You know, was this a, a rampantly gay country in the 40s? Last time I looked, it wasn't. But we still said, we're not going to get our hands dirty with that. That's not going to suit us. We're not going to do that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing that we got involved with Vietnam? Oh my gosh, I'm really going to town. Isn't it great that we got involved with Vietnam, but... But we kind of thought we should let the Holocaust thing work itself out. I, I got a lot of bitterness on this. I'm amazed by it. But you know what? I'm a Christian in America. So I'm allowed to hate who I want. And I'm allowed to voice my opinion and offend anybody I want. Because it's not about melting hearts to Jesus. And I could post stuff on Facebook that's just going to divide the country even more. I remember when... Uh, um, <clears throat> Michael Moore was uh, responsible for dividing the country with the Fahrenheit 9-11 movie, which, by the way, just to add insult to injury here, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Right or wrong, it was a damn good movie. It was very funny. And if one word of that was true, I've seen the abyss. But he was responsible for dividing the country. I even said that. He, he did. He also got Americans talking and voting more than they ever had. But, you know, that really did polarize the country. Well, now... Now, the Christians who judged him are doing it. Look how fast that was. That's like seven years. Now we're doing, now we're politically polarizing the country. 
we're doing it. And, you know, I, <laughs> I have nothing nice to say about any politician, so I, I don't want to be taken out of context here, but <clears throat> um, I've heard a lot of things said about our president heard a lot of things said about our president. And I've heard them said from people that I think are just a little racist. That's just yeah. me. I've heard it. I've gone, oh, I wonder how much of that's fueled by the fact that just looking at them bugs you. And I like to point out how many Christians secretly voted for Clinton. <laughs> um, <clears throat> He's like the new Nixon. But they voted for Clinton. Um, and I, I remember back then going, yeah, he's going to get a lot more votes because he's actually kind of good-looking guy. He's one of the best. I, I think he's the best-looking president I've ever seen a picture of. That I always thought that. And I know other people say no, but I know a lot of people agreed with me at the time. And uh, it's very interesting. Just by their faces, oh, I like him. Or I don't. It's like picking horses at the horse race. Oh, I like the name of that one, and I don't like the name of that one. Yeah, I'm a huge Maria McKee fan, and someone named their horse Lone Justice after her band. And fortunately, the horse is winning, but if I ever went to the horse races and there was a horse named after one of my all-time favorite bands, win or lose, I would, I would say, oh, I like this one. I think that's what people do with politicians. It's like, uh, Sarah Palin comes off as a dork, you know? And so I think a lot of people, you know, can make fun of her, but I, I would like to point out, I think she's really smart. Be careful with that one. <laughs> she's really smart you know, in a dorking sort of way. But I'm just saying, I don't think we know who any of these people are. So straight across the board, I have nothing nice to say. It. And, and when you say Christian politician, I'm like, well, that's an oxymoron, isn't it? Isn't it? You know? And uh, Billy Graham, who is now on my other list, because I've always spoken well in him, has spoken up about the Chick-fil-A thing, by the way. So Satan went all the way to the top to divide us. That really bothers me. It really bothers me. Billy Graham, who's probably not able to speak or write anymore, so someone in this camp snuck in. I, that's the only thing I'm holding on to. Because I've always thought Billy Graham was, was, was thoughtful. I've always thought that. I always thought he was thoughtful in his ministry. That he was aware of whom he would be affecting good and bad by what he did. I don't think he was a fence writer. But I think he was thoughtful. And, but apparently, you know, he said that he totally supports Chick-fil-A and that it's good to see Christians take a stand. And I'm like, wow, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard an evangelist say. Take a stand? Take a stand in your own life. Take a stand in your own character. And anyone who's tried to take a stand privately between yourself and God, that's pretty hard. Hard to maintain it, isn't it? Like one of the hardest things in the world. I mean, I, I, I'm not bagging on smokers, but it's a really good example. If I'm going to quit smoking today, well, that's one thing to take a stand on. And when you do that, you realize there are how many other things you're going to have to do that with. You know? You take them on one at a time. So it's easier to attack others. But what happens to being all things to all people to win them for Christ? But I will tell you, those days may be over. If Christians running around saying this is the new Holocaust and and uh, and you know that we're going to live in a police state and we're not going to be allowed to worship in all the stuff they're praying for, what do you mean we're praying for? It? Well, if, you, if that's all you talk about, you must want it. I'm not being metaphysical here. I'm not saying you're speaking it into existence. I'm saying you're getting on my nerves. You know, but at some point, the thing you fear the most is probably the thing you want the most. Isn't that how people are? I had a therapist say that to me. What's your biggest fear? And I said, well, I'm not going to say it here. But I said, that's the thing you want the most. And I said, that's not true. That's not true. Well, wear it for a day, Paisley. Just for a day, secretly pretend. I'll use an example. Everyone knows I don't like to fly. So... Secretly pretend for a day that you want the plane to crash. Boy, do you find out a lot about yourself if you do that. I really, seriously, this is not spiritual, this is just mental stuff. But the thing we fear the most tends to be the thing we think about the most, and the thing we think about the most, it's not like praying. 
If you think about it, if, I, if I'm thinking of, you know, I don't send good thoughts your way, by the way. I don't have any. But, you know, when people say I thoughts, send thoughts and prayers, I say, you know what, Just screw your thoughts. Get on your knees and pray to the right God or, you know, go back and play on Facebook. Seriously. But, but I think one of the forms we pray is we think. Just stuff we think about. Wouldn't it be nice if, when, and, 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 the, and, and God overhears that and says, hmm, okay, I think that's a great idea. My gosh, I spent all day thinking, oh, this is the new Holocaust and they're going to come and get us and they're going to take us away. Sooner or later, God's going to say, you know, the stench of your prayers has reached me. And it seems like you're, that's what you really want. Now, why do you want that so much? Now, for the record, I don't. I don't. I want Jesus to come before the great tri tribulation. I want to be raptured. I don't want to die. I don't. I, any of the versions I've heard, I'm not attracted to. And if you want to know why I don't want to die in my sleep peacefully, Google Gilda Radner dying in sleep on Saturday Night Live. It's the funniest sketch I've ever seen, but it scared the crap out of me as a kid of what it looks like to die in your sleep peacefully. So you really need it. I'm not acting it out. You need to say it's hilarious. But seriously, all the versions of death don't appeal to me. But I do not want... I do not want to be carted away and put into a camp. I don't want to be sent off somewhere or, or shot in the streets for my faith if I don't have to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want that to happen. So I don't want to cause it by polarizing the planet where I actually deserve it. If I run a home-based business and I get a note from the city that says, um, we know you're running a home-based business and this is what the laws are. And I say, well, God wants me to run a home-based business and I'm going to do it anyways. And then I get another letter from the city saying, you know, you're going to fine you for this. And then I get fined for it, and then they say, well, now we're going to call you, into, you know, we're going to arrest you for this, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. I can't really cry out that I'm being persecuted. I really can't. See, persecution is something completely different than getting in trouble for being stubborn and doing things your way. And unfortunately, we men tend to be stubborn and do things our way. But... The Bible tells us how to live within the confines of our culture, the laws, the government. And when we violate that, and we do, sometimes for good. I worked in hospice, and they made me swear to them when they hired me that I would not bring up Jesus to dying people. And I looked at them right in the eye and said, of course, I, I, I swear I will never try to lead any of the dying people I minister to to Jesus. It'll never happen. And I went right out and did it. I went right out and did it. You know what I knew? I knew that I'd said, you're welcome to fire me the minute I get caught if you want. And if I got fired, I could not say I was being persecuted. I would have to admit, I lied. I lied. The only way I can get in the door was lying. And by the way, I never got fired. And they totally knew I was doing There was nothing they could do to stop me. All they could say is, he swore to us he wouldn't do it. He's out of control. He's out of control. Well, he was. He lied his way in and he lied. I, anything it would have taken to get to those people that no one else, or worse, someone was going to get to who didn't care about their soul. So yeah, but sometimes we do good in the name of the Lord, and it's against the laws of the land. That's a fact. Preaching at the workplace. Well, when you get fired, you're not being persecuted. You get caught. They got sick of it. You knew that. There's a big difference between that, which I'm totally condoning, just to be clear. I'm proud of lying to work in hospice. I'm very proud of it. And I do it again. I wouldn't even think twice. And I know I was blessed for doing it. But... And by the way, no one ever got mad. For, I never got in trouble. Like, no patients ever got mad. Families never. And nothing bad happened because of it. Never. Never. But if it did, I'd have to admit it was my fault. I'd have to. 
But that's not being persecuted. That's just putting priority on something over something else and recognizing that in certain environments of our society, the laws don't provide for that. So your, your days are numbered doing it. Well, our days are numbered as Christians on planet Earth. But do we really need to speed up the process? Do we really need to make the whole planet mad at us just because we won't be obedient to what the Bible says? Let's wait for them to persecute us because we're good. Let's wait till we get to the point where we're looking at each other saying, all we're doing is good. We can't hide from them anymore. That would be really neat. That won't ever happen. At the rate we're going, we are asking to be removed. We are be asking to be removed. If we get the whole planet to hate Christians by the way we act, then what? The whole planet will turn on us. Gosh, do we learn anything from Planet of the Apes? Gosh. <laughs> but it, it's the truth. And then what? What if, what, wouldn't it be amazing if the day that comes that we can't buy, our, buy or sell is because people can't stand us? I, I'm not going to let you shop at my store. I hate you. You people make me sick. No Christians allowed. Can you imagine? No Christians allowed. Not going to use your service, and I'm not going to let you spend money at mine. Good luck finding a place to buy your food. If every market starts putting up signs that says, no Christians allowed. Think about it. First off, you'd have a huge wave of people saying, well, I'm a Christian, and I'm not going to pretend I'm not. Well, then you have me, who has kids, who says, they don't need to know I'm a Christian today. Shame, I will walk right in. I will do everything to stay alive for my kids. Everything. God, I love the story of the Christians in the Bible study in some faraway country, and, and all of a sudden they're having a, a clandestine Bible study, and then the... <clears throat> then... Uh, the soldiers come in and point guns at everyone and say, um, who are the Christians in this room? And then the real Christians raise their hand and admit to being Christians they know they're about to be killed for their faith. And then the soldiers say, okay, everyone else, get out of here. Then when everybody leaves, the soldiers say, okay, we're Christians too. Can we pray with you? <laughs> and I love this story. It's great, great urban legend. I love that. I would be out the door. I, I have nothing to prove to someone with a gun. I have nothing to prove to someone. That is not standing up for my faith. That's dying for it when there's something else I can do. I'm sorry. I've thought about this a lot. I mean, the, 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 the middle ground is I have the Holy Spirit, and I hope the Holy Spirit would tell me, now's the time to stand up your faith and die for it. But seriously, can't I just be a Jew for 30 seconds? <laughs> Didn't Paul do that to get into other countries? Didn't he only say, I'm a Roman? Didn't he only say, I'm a Jew? Didn't he kind of fib? Hello? I'm sorry, but if, if we can't buy, if we can't shop at Walmart, because people hate Christians and there's signs saying no Christians allowed, and we have a bunch of people saying, well, I'm a Christian and I'm going to stand up for my faith, the rest of us who still want to buy at Walmart and just keep our big mouths shut, We'll have people stand together. Paisley's a Christian. There's one. There's one. There's one. Our own people. We will lead ourselves into our own Holocaust if we do not stop being the people on planet Earth that everybody hates. Not because we're obedient to God and, and shining in His light, but because we're unbearable to coexist. The Bible says be all things to all people. I want to get along with as many people that hate me. So the one person who's paying attention, I can get along with and lead to the Lord. And I'll do anything to do that. I'll lie. I'll do anything. I don't care. I'll lie to the people that hate me and want to kill me. Who want to silence my voice.